Yeah, yeah, everyone, this is Thermites, and this is The Rehearsal, Episode 3. This is my redirect and my discussion video, so if you want to check out the actual reaction, click the first link down below. You can watch it there, stream it, download it, and then when you are done with that, please come back for the discussion. That's about enough time. So, this is now the discussion portion. Hopefully you have watched the reaction first. <laughs> Boy! I I actually really, really love the way this episode plays out with, like, doing two rehearsals. Like, the Angela slash Nathan rehearsal and then the Patrick rehearsal. It plays out so well with the idea of, like, of Nathan having an actual job. Like, within the realm of Angela's rehearsal. Within that realm of we're out in the country and we're farming to survive. And I've presumably, she never says this, but it works very well as, like, I've got a husband who is, like, actually the person who is bringing in the money. And then I have, like, a side business on Etsy. And so, like, Nathan's actual job then is still doing rehearsals, which is in real life his actual job at this point in time. <laughs> so he gets to go out and he sets up the whole Patrick thing. I, ah, it works so well. I mean, it is the perfect thing for this show in that, like, it has this layer of unreality to it, but it is also what is actually happening. It is these people's actual emotions. It is unbelievably weird as a situation but also there is some level of realism in it because it is so weird and unreal because everything about this situation the situations being developed on the show are inherently like weird and unreal I mean, even, like, the bookends of, uh, like, starting it off with Angela saying, with the whole, like, I don't celebrate Halloween, and Nathan reacting to that the way he has reacted to all sorts of weird shit, like, uh, oh, what was his name, Robin from episode two, where he would just, like, sit there and be like, okay, yeah, you're just telling me that you're going to sexually assault this girl on TV, but I, I guess I'll let you talk about it, whatever. <laughs> to at the end of this episode like yeah he is very much like that when angela's talking about how Hall halloween is the devil's holiday and how like you know there's satanic sacrifices that happen on halloween and clearly he you know he's treating that in a very like well i'm going to let you talk about this and i don't believe this is true but i, I want you to run your mouth whereas at the end he has become more of a, a dad slash husband in this role he is he feels more comfortable with just like you know actually challenging her beliefs not to the point where he's really, really pushing it, but also, like, just from the energy I get from him on the show, I feel like even in real life, he is not the kind of person who would, you know, hit you with the hard, this is actual nonsense. Or rather, he would say it in the same way he does in this episode, where he is just questioning, like, why would Google, you know, why would Google be hiding the fact that it's a satanic holiday full of ritual sacrifice? Why would, you know, why would there be no proof uh, unless you specifically look up, you know, Halloween satanic origins and then you find some crackpot site that will re reform your own personal beliefs it's, it's so interesting seeing him like you know fall into the concept of like actually you know gaining attachment to these people not necessarily becoming an actual dad or anything but at the very least like this is the episode of him learning about emotions as he says himself the previous reaction or the previous rehearsals were not really about emotions to him and this is the moment where he has the big turning point of like okay i do need to make this actually real <laughs> which is of course <laughs> it leads to a very fucked up um, sequence with the, the whole patrick thing uh, i may as well just go through this in order so you know in case anything spurs my mind uh, just uh, the whole homesteading thing which we didn't really focus on in the second episode really love that we got to focus on it and that it, it helps add you know add more to that separation that like you know obviously angela is not actually living through this the way she really would were she in this situation except maybe she is <laughs> like uh, she is you know she's, she gets to have the fantasy of like planning out like we would have this big garden and we'd be self-sufficient but also we can have food like you know like brought in like the yogurt she's eating right there there is that layer of well we can you know have the setup that requires a lot of manual labor but i am not going to do the manual labor we have, I mean, even near the, like, closer to the end of the episode, the nanny thing was so strong and a hard, like, I can see why, you know, A, the existence of a nanny invalidates Nathan and Angela being here. It pushes the, you know, the simulation closer and closer to the concept of what if there was an actor, like, uh, the, the nanny, as far as you know, is not an actor. So it is like, what if we hired an actual nanny to take care of a child actor or, like, a series of child actors that neither of us are now 
like, you know, actually raising. <laughs> like, what exactly is being simulated is getting less and less, you know, attached to the core premise. But it is still a good simulation of what they would actually be doing in this situation. You know, like, a part of being a parent is not being around your kid 24-7. You do realize eventually, well, I have to have a job in order to support the kid, or I gotta go out and get groceries, I gotta, you know, I've got responsibilities that I need to fulfill that are separate from the kid experience to the point where being around the kid all the time is unnatural. Like, that's the thing that really gets me with, you know, Angela. What I was saying before was, you know, Angela's not taking this quite seriously. But if, you know, the fates were to align and she did, like, somehow get married to a rich guy who had a, like, you know, a place out in the boonies who was willing to, like, cultivate all this food so that they could live off the grid... Like, she might still act like this. I know there are, like, lots of, you know, people who, you know, get families and, you know, have kids and all that who do genuinely act like this, who don't, like, you know, play that big of a role in their situation, who do just kind of, like, sit off and do their own thing. So that's not unrealistic. That is not even a, like, well, because it's a simulation she's doing this, this could be 100% what she will actually do should, you know, at the end of this, she actually find someone who is willing to live this life with her. She might fall into, well, I'm not going to do any work outside, and also I'm not going to raise the kid. <laughs> like, there's still so many things that are obviously, you know, not realistic, but it's it's interesting, you know, that I can't, like, just outright say, okay, well, this does not say something about the person, because it definitely does. Even the things that are unrealistic and how they interact with the things that are not, you know, true to the actual way in which they would play out in real life, they do say things about what they would actually do in that situation. <laughs> but at the same time, the data is flawed, so you can't go that hard on, like, well, you would do exactly this. Because, of course, like, in an actual situation, like with Core, like, it is fundamentally different. And you can get closer and closer and closer to creating something that is similar to that situation, but you can never create the actual simulation. Or the situation, rather. Yeah. Well, I love seeing that, you know, Nathan was clearly very excited in Episode 2 about the idea of this being a situation where he also learns how to raise a kid. And so, the the like, the detachment he has from the child actor to the point where, you know, the, the kid would literally not know he, who he was given this time period and given, like, you know, how much time he is away. But also, you know, and the fact that, he you know, he has a wife who is not going to, like, reinforce that. Uh, like, uh in my actual life, that did happen with me and my own parents, in the sense that my dad had to work a lot. And when he came home, it was basically just to sleep and then go back out. And so when I was really, really, really little, I didn't recognize who my father was. And my mom, to her absolute credit, had to te teach me, like, yo, no, this is your dad. And, you know, she would have me, you know, get closer to him. And, you know, like, he would, she would really try hard to maintain that bond, which I am eternally grateful for. And so I think it's actually very notable that Angela does not do that at all, like, at least as we see. We've never seen an instance of her with the actor saying, like, oh, it's your daddy outside. He's, you know, helping to irrigate the crops so we don't have to eat processed food or anything. Like, every time we see her with the kid, it is always something that is, you know, some form of the fun part of parenting. Like, even when we do see Nathan with the kid, it is stuff like the diaper thing where it's like, this isn't that fun. I mean, you know, near the end, we get more, like, fun family stuff with all of them as a whole. But, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. Because also, Nathan is the director, so he gets to choose what comes in and what doesn't. He gets to create the narrative. It is very possible that she's actually been very nice, and she you know, has been telling some of the actors, like, hey, this is what your daddy's like, and he's an awesome guy. And that just doesn't show up because, A, he doesn't put it in, or B, that, you know, but the, the actors keep on changing. And so even if she were to say that to one actor, like, the next one won't have any idea that was said because there's not, like... As far as we know, they're not telling the actors every time, like, okay, here's all this footage of everything your predecessors have done. You need to internalize all of that. <laughs> Which, I mean, also adds this extra layer of, like, you know, this is not just what if you're raising a kid. It's also what if you're raising a kid who had amnesia, huh? And even, like, the, uh, the the photo book that they had later on is such this added layer of, like, the, it's full of fake memories. So even if this was somehow an actual kid who was, like, just, you know, living in, like, sped up time, there would still be all the stuff that would be completely new to him. It is this ultimate just, like, ah, there's so many flaws and divergences. There's so many holes in the ship.
But yeah, uh, switching over to the Patrick side of things, I really, I, I do love that we start off with him being so, I mean, you know, everyone in the show is weird, but, you know, specifically with the anti-Semitism stuff and with the hard, like, you know, here's my pendant with both of my grandfathers fused together, and then here is my uh, Punisher logo thing that I have because the, the Punisher kills people. Like, there's so much that sets you up to think, okay, he's going to be off-putting. But then we don't really get to see a lot of that in him going forward. Like, the show is, you know, very clearly, you know, showing us things that are, you know, uh, how do I put it? Partially, it's stuff that is endearing. And partially, we know that the circumstance he is in is very emotionally manipulative. So even if you were to, you know, b you know to be more obviously not a good guy, even if you were saying way more slurs... Like, you, you wouldn't be able to help but feel some level of empathy and emotion when he is breaking down, crying, talking to this actor playing his uh, his brother about his real-world situation and how much he just, you know, wants closure. Yeah, I talked about it a bit in the reaction itself, but I do love the, like, you know, the fact that they even brought up the concept of how do you deal with something that, you know, as off-putting as racism in this simulation. In the sense that, you know, like, Nathan has this clear bias, like, he thinks he at least has a bias towards realism. So there is that layer of, like, well, if you're going to, you know, use that kind of terminology, and then that is what you would actually be doing with your brother, we can't change that. But also, it adds that extra layer of, well, we've seen Nathan change so many things. We've seen him literally stop the adoption scene to talk, you know, like in episode two, to talk to the actual mother. I I, I don't remember if I said whether, you know, like, uh, you know, if I, that she was an actress or not, but no, that was the actual mother of the actor that was being handed over. <laughs> like, the fact that Nathan would stop that and say, like, no, listen, you gotta say more about why you're an unfit mother. But he still has this feeling of, like, well, I can't stop this, you know, this scene to say, no, 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 don't be racist. <laughs> because, of course, you would actually be doing that. Like, it's something I see a lot online, that bias of, well, this thing is pretty fucked up, and so it's realistic, and therefore we can't not depict it while ignoring other things that are you know, also equally very, very unrealistic, but, you know, they're not fucked up. So you're like, well, it's okay if we don't depict that, because it doesn't have that feel of gritty realism to it. I mean, that's just true amongst a lot of things, like, even outside of, uh, like, like, outside of entertainment. It is like a psychological phenomenon that people think of bad equals more real. And there is a fair bit of pushback to that in, you know, in various mediums and whatnot. But it is just cool seeing someone fall for that in an actual TV show, that feeling of, well, you know, if that's the way you talk, then, you know, even with all the other changes we are making to this situation, we wouldn't change this one thing. Like, yeah, everything is a line drawn in the sand, so it's interesting to see that line being drawn. Especially since it doesn't come up in the episode. Like, we not, not once after that point do we see the actor playing uh, Patrick's brother, uh, Chris. Or, wait, uh, yeah. Yeah, his brother is Chris. We, we never see the actor playing Chris say out loud, like, a racist sentiment. We don't see Patrick then, like, you know, bring up the, you know, the anti-Semitic stuff again after that point. It is a very clear, like, this is not, in fact, more realistic. This doesn't add a sense of realism. This is something we highlighted in this one instance, and then we didn't show it after that point. It is... Very interesting. I mean, also just the idea that, like, in episode one with Core, we focused so much on the spreadsheet. And Core was very, very amenable to the concept of the spreadsheet. Like, he was truly the perfect person to go into this TV show with. Because it's not like Patrick is bristling against it. It's, it. It is just that he doesn't really seem to have a plan early on, which baffles Nathan. And then at the very end, he is just speaking from the actual heart, which also baffles Nathan. Like, it's interesting that we have now Core, who was very, like, logical and analytical and very willing to go along with everything, but he had this hard rule of, I care about, I care about actually coming out as much as I care about winning this trivia contest. They are of equal value to me. Then we have Angela, who has all these grandiose, like, beliefs and whatnot, but doesn't really stick to them, and isn't very interested in the realism aspect, or really even in seeing how well she would do as a mom. Like, this never really comes up to her in the simulation. She is, you know, uh, the other uh, people have, like, brought up things like, hey, you know, th this would happen, or, you know, I feel weird about this, or blah, 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 blah. It, it really doesn't come up like that with Angela. Angela's kind of just, like, living her life, just in this house where weird things are going on.
And then we get Patrick, who is who is just the emotional one. It is. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. I'm curious to see who else will show up. Like, I, I have to imagine we're not going to see all the rehearsals that were done for the purpose of the show. And so, like, of the ones that Nathan is picking out, of the ones that were good enough to go on TV, like, which ones do we go for? Though, to be fair, I guess I can't say that as if, you know, he, you know, he had infinite time and ability to choose everything because, uh... I can never remember his name, uh, but the guy who, you know, was going to try and sexually assault Angela, like, he just dipped from the production, or Patrick ultimately also just completely dipped. Like, he doesn't have that much control over the people. They can leave at any point, and unlike a lot of series where they say you can leave at any point, it does seem like they will actually leave at any point if they, if they so desire. So there is that added level of, like, I, 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 I'm I going to take back what I said at the start, because I don't think uh, Nathan has enough footage to, like, you know, exactly show everything he wants. Oh, that is fascinating to think about. Oh, the grandpa stuff, don't have a whole lot to say about it specifically, just I went into it really thinking, like, this is really dumb, this is a silly idea, there's no way he's not going to see through it. But I like both that, you know... It, it does tie into the actor, like, you know, the actor's performance. Uh, Isaac, I believe, was what they called him in the subs. How that ties in so well. Like, how he was, you know, the actor was clearly able to use both this realer, you know, within the, the kayfabe, this realer idea of, like, oh, well, my grandpa actually died, and now I might have a bias against you, with I'm playing your brother, who also has a bias against you for the same reasons. Like, it lines up so well in actual practice and it has it has enough emotional realism for it to work and also just the fact that Patrick dipped does make me wonder like did he like in the moment I could totally see him going like well it's weird that this old man is you know helping me dig up gold but you know whatever and then he may have just realized during the production like oh they fucked me over or that was a lie or I can't believe I cried on camera over this whole situation when it was clearly obvious Obviously bullshit, they've literally had me digging for gold. It's so well designed. Yeah, I already talked about the nanny stuff. Already, you know, like the fact they made him wipe his ass. Uh, uh, just the, the, the line he said, so truly Patrick, I should say. About like, yeah, I was wiping my grandpa's ass while we were watching Dragon Ball Z. Is, that got me so hard because it's such a funny concept and it's so real feeling in my mind it's such an easy like yeah i i totally get that like i never had to do that myself because i was too young when my grandparents were still around but you know it just immediately gave me this big flash of like oh i can totally understand this now i can totally see it in my own mind but yeah i think that's basically all i want to say like uh, i brought up the nanny before uh, I i'm sure we're probably going to get more nanny stuff in the next episode because yeah, like, if we're going this long on the Angela thing, then I'm guessing Angela is going to be, like, the entire background arc of this. Because also, like, we have a really good status quo now of Nathan can go out and, you know, go to work, which is the other episodes of the rehearsal, and do all that stuff. And then he has a home life now he can go to. He's got, like, this long-running project that's, you know, just slowly being done that is very personal and very emotionally in impacting there's also the layer of, like, you know, at the start of the episode, seeing him, like, do all this actual labor out here. And then, uh, like, was it after doing that that he was like, well, we can just plant crops slash, oh, well, this doesn't line up with the, you know, the speed of time that we are moving through. And therefore, it would actually be more realistic, in a sense, for the crops to suddenly appear. Even though that, again, like, that feeds into, like, you know, the falsity of this and the fact that Angela is, you know, like, this is giving Angela a really bad idea of what it's like to live out in the wilderness. <laughs> This idea that you can just, you know, uh, plant some seeds and then immediately go out and get the crops. Yeah, I mean, even the, like, you know, the mirrors and whatnot that, you know, uh, will now show Nathan is looking older to himself. Presumably it'll make Angela look older to herself, but they don't see each other as being old. But, you know, they will see Adam, you know, getting older and older and older over time. It's just, oh, it's so weird. It has such a, uh, unreality is really the best way I have to put it. And that really does play into the, uh, you know, the, the sticker at the very end. The idea that Nathan, uh, I guess the, you know, the way I would interpret that is actually Nathan sees how fake everything is because he is the director, because he is the writer, because he's the one creating the whole show. Like, it is impossible. You know, he can buy into it a tiny little bit. I do think in that one, you know, sequence where he was just playing with Adam and, you know, Adam threw the stick at him. Like, I fully believe him when he says that that, yeah, that felt real to him. 
But apart from that, he like way more than Angela, who either is buying into it or just doesn't care. Like Nathan can definitely see the seams constantly, and he just has to consciously turn them away or hide them. Yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Sorry, this is a little more scatterbrained than usual, but uh, I think I said basically most of what I want to say in the episode itself. Next episode, very excited to see more of the nanny, actually. Like, just the idea of <laughs> two adults in the simulation sitting in the house, you know, either, you know, doing other things while a nanny raises their kids is, I don't know exactly what that means about society, but it feels like it says a lot about society. <laughs> It feels like a good metaphor for something. I mean, I guess it is just literally a depiction of when you have a kid and you don't, neither of you want to raise the kid. That is literally what it is. But it feels like there's something more there. That's a lot of the feel I get from the rehearsal, honestly. There's so many scenes that were just, it feels like, it feels like a metaphor for something. Even down to the, the one shot they, you know, kept in of the, uh, like the actress at the fake, uh, what is that called again? Uh, Raising Canes, where she is like very clearly pretending to eat this uh, food in the background. Though I guess it is just, you know, showing how, you know, the, the layers of falseness to everything. That is also, you know, a big part of this episode specifically is just the layers of falseness to everything. Okay, I'm starting to ramble on, so I'm going to cut it off right there. If there's anything I didn't talk about or something I just outright didn't notice or anything, please, please, please let me know. Uh, apart from that, if you're enjoying these, please leave a comment down below, uh, like and subscribe and all that, and I'll do the rest of the season relatively soon. So thank you very much. Bye for now. Nya, nya.